Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. Now I do hate doing how-to videos because I know that everybody's needs are different, everybody's growing environment's different, you know, everybody grows different things. But sometimes you can take inspiration from how somebody else does something. So this is a how do I video. Uh, and this is how do I grow in containers, especially undercover and in the polytunnel really. Um, and my general principle is that I'll only grow something in a container when it's only going to be in the polytunnel temporarily. Now, sometimes that means that it's going to grow in the polytunnel for a while, you know, in early spring, for example, and then it's going to go outside. Sometimes it means it's going to start outside and it's going to finish its life in the polytunnel. Sometimes it means it's a short lived plant. So, for example, I might have early tomatoes in containers and, you know, but after a while, I'm just going to compost those plants because the ones in the ground have taken over. So it's just, just to get an early plant, an early start on the season and then sacrifice the plant a bit later on. So cucumbers and um, yeah, tomatoes might be an example of that. But there are a few examples where things just, you know, just perfectly suited uh, to containers um, because of their short lived plants. And so an example of that would be a strawberry. So a strawberry that's forced in the polytunnel to give an early crop, you, you know, those plants are not going to stay in those containers. They're going to be left in the containers for a little while until I get runners off them. And then those runners are going to get potted up back into probably back into those containers eventually. Um, but re really the plant, the strawberry is only going to be in the polytunnel from probably say February, through to June or something like that. So there's no, I don't want to clutter up uh, very valuable bed space in the polytunnel in summer to a plant that's finished harvesting in June, for example. Another example is something that trails down. I really like to have in hanging baskets. Well, strawberries is an example of a hanging basket one as well. Um, and so cucumber melons are a great example of that. So let's stop the waffling and I'll just show you around. So as you can see here, wherever possible, I will grow in the ground. And that's just because there's such a massive reservoir of nutrients in the ground and of water. And so it just makes it much easier for the plants to get a nice continuous uh, flow of moisture uh, without relying on me remembering to water morning, noon and night uh, all the way through the summer. So these tomatoes in halos planted in the ground peppers, same thing, all the way down there. Well, here we've got an example of a tomato, a lovely early harvest, hopefully, of Ildi. And this should come in probably three or four weeks before the harvest that I get from my main crop tomatoes. And then this plant can either be, just go outside and continue its life outside, or it can just be sacrificed to the compost heap um, because I've got plenty of other plants to take its place. But uh, yeah, just look at those trusses, wonderful. So here's another example, sweet corn. And so these sweet corn are growing really beautifully in the polytunnel. Um, and these, I've got quite a few of these containers. Uh, and these are actually going to go to the, go home and uh, live on the patio at home. Um, but they just get a wonderful early start in the polytunnel before they go home. So here's another example. This is um, zucchini or courgette. And so we just harvested this yesterday. We took uh, two courgettes off there. And there's another three courgettes coming. And that's interplanted again with sweet corn. And this will probably stay in the polytunnel because I want the earliest possible harvest of this sweet corn. And I'll get that by leaving this in the polytunnel. And then of course, once the, um, the sweet corn has been harvested, then this uh, container will get reused for something else. Um, but the courgette plant won't stay in there. It'll only stay until the harvest of courgettes outside starts. And then it'll come out and then all of this pot and all the water in it and all the nutrients in it will be left for the sweet corn. So as I mentioned, 
I hate growing tomatoes in pots in any sort of container really. Um, but here's one <laughs> real exception to the rule growing in a hanging basket. It's nice and high, but the plant is really unhappy in here. But just look at the number of tomatoes. So this will definitely be my earliest harvest of tomatoes. And it's just because it's in the warmest spot and the lightest, sunniest spot in the polytunnel. And so it's worth it, you know, watering it every day, sometimes twice a day, just to get some very early tomatoes and then it'll be gone. But strawberries are the absolute perfect polytunnel container uh, hanging basket crop really. They're off the ground so there's no danger of slugs or anything like that. They don't need a huge amount of water by comparison with lots of other things but they really like the warmth and the light up here in the roof of the polytunnel uh, and of course they'll be gone by the end of June so they won't provide any shade or anything like that to uh, look at that weed um, to the uh, uh, peppers and the tomatoes down below. So yeah, I love having strawberries in containers. I'm going to have many more of them. I can't remember how many I've got at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plants I think there. So yeah, I'll have some more in there next year. And they, I absolutely loved having strawberries every time I come down to water every day. Fantastic. So the next one, kooka melons. Now, I really love kooka melons. Uh, in fact, we, you know, we put them in our standard salad mixes and uh, you know, everybody that uh, gets salad mixes from us just really loves them. They're, they're a really messy plant. They trail down, maybe you can see on this one better, with these tiny little tendrils. And if you plant them in and, and they climb up things, then they make a real mess, a tangled mess, basically. But just hanging down, fantastic. It's really easy to find the actual cucumelon fruits. Um, but in order to reduce the watering, I've got them in these self-watering pots. So basically the, the bottom portion of the pot is a water reservoir. And uh, so you fill the water reservoir up through this tube here. And then there's a wick that goes into the water reservoir and it takes um, water out of the reservoir into a sort of felt mat that's underneath the soil and obviously that gets nice and wet and then the compost absorbs that. So they'll grow in there nicely and they'll only need watering maybe maybe twice a week um, although the manufacturer says once every seven days but I'm not so sure that in the polytunnel they'll survive quite that long. But yeah it just makes picking them really easily they don't get tangled up. This is not the perfect place for them. It's the perfect place to start them because they're out of the way. I've got the full trestle table there for doing the harvests. And we harvest twice a week. And having this trestle table here to do all the harvest, lay all the veg out for packing, really makes a massive difference to us. It makes it really, really convenient. Um, and uh, so having these lifted off makes that just perfect. But they will eventually go up there where the uh, strawberries are at the moment. Now I also do have this trailing blackberry and uh, I've got that in a container just because I just wanted to see what these trailing blackberries were like. So it's just a bit of an experiment really just to, uh, to see. But I'm not uh, confident that that will be an experiment that will get repeated. So next I've got my cucumbers uh, and obviously they're in pots partly because I have this space at the end of my uh, polytunnel where I don't have a raised bed uh, but I've got space for these big pots and uh, so they're fine for cucumbers they love it in there um, so partly it's just practicality that I have them in here but also it's because I find the cucumbers get a bit exhausted towards the end of the season so I want to swap them out and put new cucumber plants in here and uh, that allows me just to start new cucumber plants then take these out pop the new ones in later in the season and keep on harvesting you know into november hopefully so then i've got my runner beans and these are very close now to going outside 
but you can see this is a magnificent uh, well, even if I do say so myself, a magnificent plant. Uh, it's grown in a moderately sized container, needs a fair amount of water. It's got a huge number of, uh, of runner beans on it. And, uh, you know, most runner beans outside are, you know, six to 12 inches tall, something like that. So this gives us about a, a month's extra supply of uh, runner beans. It works best at the beginning of the season not quite as good a harvest of runner beans at the end of the season but it's still worth doing at the end of the season so you get runner beans to november something like that so uh, so not too bad and then we've got carrots so these reasonably sized containers here um, do a lovely job of carrots so these were planted uh, in the house in January I think sown in the house uh, just left under a table in the conservatory um, and we started harvesting these carrots about a month ago now um, and they've been outside for most of that time uh, well so they were in the, the conservatory for two weeks until they germinated then they were in the polytunnel from about February all the way through until probably March time then they came outside they've thrived outside just getting a little bit of mildew on them now look but lovely carrots really nice size and uh, yeah very very happy with those and same th thing at the end of the season you can start in containers and then move those containers inside for storage um, and so we'll be doing that and then we've got another container here which we've just finished eating the uh, carrots out of that but those were planted in October uh, and then they, they were harvested in March time and then the final example probably would be potatoes so my potato growing technique last this year was I saved my own Charlotte uh, um, tubers. I chitted them in December, I planted them in January, I germinated them effectively so in the conservatory and the spare bedroom uh, and they only need to be there for two weeks. At that point they'd broken through the top of the compost in the containers. Uh, the containers were the same ones that you've just seen there that had the cucumbers in them. Um, and then they stayed in the polytunnel, fleeced at night if there was a chance of frost, um, and they were harvested in April. So fantastic early crop of potatoes with minimal effort. Really, the only thing you needed to only two tricks really. First was save your own because then you've got because shops don't normally uh, provide seed potatoes until sort of January, well, late January, February time. So if you want to do it really early, you've got to save your own. So save your own, um, chit them in December, and then you do need them somewhere warm, really. Uh, so as I say, somewhere in the house, anywhere, just a corner in the house, underneath the table, whatever, like I do it. Um, and but only until they just break the surface. In fact, you probably don't even have to wait until they break the surface, but that's what I do. Uh, as soon as they break the surface, move them to the polytunnel or greenhouse or whatever. Um, yeah, so that works lovely. And I'll pull up a few pictures of those. Um, and next year, I'm hoping to get that a bit earlier. So I'm hoping to get them by March. Um, I won't tell you I'm gonna do that. I'll leave that for another video. So I think that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's me and my sort of love-hate relationship with containers because I really love them used kind of strategically, I guess, the beginning of the ends of the seasons, uh, over winter. Oh, I suppose I should mention actually over winter. Yeah, it's really great. So if you um, plant uh, in sort of October time, probably September, October time, say Calabrese, Romanesco cauliflowers, things like that. Um, and then grow them on, it doesn't have to be a frost-free place, but it doesn't want to be a place where they get hard frost. So somewhere like a polytunnel or a greenhouse again, 
uh, keep them potted on into reasonable size containers and uh, reasonable size pots and then you can plant those into containers in January February time and then you get a really nice super early harvest uh, you know in March uh, well actually we had some in February and March um, now they're not the biggest calabrese or, or romanesco cauliflowers you know not huge but it's just great when you're self-sufficient like us get in veg uh, when you get something super early in the season fresh it's like gold really so uh, yeah there we go some hints and tips about containers and just avoid them in summer basically because you know watering well unless you like watering um yeah best avoided so uh, i do know that loads of people do that and they do it really successfully but um it's not for me see you soon mm -hmm.